What's up, co-reporters, and welcome back to my channel. Last night, I watched the new Netflix documentary entitled What Jennifer Did. I posted about it on my community tab, and many of you said that you were going to watch it as well. So I figured, why not talk about it together? So hopefully you guys are all caught up on the documentary now because I've got a lot to say. First of all, I very vaguely remember hearing about this case, but like I don't, I, I don't remember the details or anything like that so when i watched it i was stunned to find out that this was a canadian story like typically these true crime documentaries occur in the united states so i just assumed that it was an american thing but when they started showing the homes i said those looks like those look like homes you can find like anywhere in ontario like is this my people um i was really really shook by it and um just seeing the anchors on ctv news and stuff these stations that we grow up with in canada and recognizing the faces of these people it was really jarring to be honest with you so um at the top of the episode we kick it off with like this 911 call that jennifer made like frantic about her parents being attacked and shot and whatnot and now knowing that she was behind that makes it all the more gut-wrenching to hear her dad in pain screaming out in agony and she's speaking over him and everything to the 911 operator as if she's trying to get help on the way and she doesn't know what happened like the level of evil that you have to be to do that to anybody but to your parents I, I can't even find the words for it. When she's interviewed at the police station, she claims that someone tried to rob her family, but the cops were suspicious because cash, expensive watches, and cameras were left at the home untouched. So it doesn't really correspond with her story about there being a burglary, which Jennifer, I see why you were not that great of a student because you should have had all of that in mind. Like you should have really thought about this. If you wanna get away with red rum, then plan your red rum properly you know so basically as we start to unwind the motivations that she could have for wanting to off her parents we find out that she had this high school boyfriend that she was with for seven years but her parents didn't want them together because he didn't make enough money he was well he was a rug dealer okay but the parents didn't know that he was a rug dealer but like for them they're like listen this man doesn't ha have an education he doesn't make enough money he's like a pizza boy at the uh, local boston pizza or whatever um and you we're training you to be a piano pro prodigy you're going to school for pharmacy like why would you get with this guy you know what i mean her parents wanted her to be with a man on her level which i personally think is a very reasonable thing i grew up with parents like that and i'm that way myself i feel like you should be with someone who's similar especially as a woman someone who's like in your stage or a little bit higher but i understand how her young high school hormones can make her go crazy over this but not to this level okay so um we get the boyfriend right who comes for well the ex-boyfriend now because they had to break up over the parents and then um he gets called in to the station for like you know questioning and everything like that and he talks about them breaking up over her parents disapproval and then um jennifer not wanting to accept the breakup and like you know then you start wondering okay so is she like really clingy with this guy like is that it like what's going on you know claims that the two of them started receiving creepy calls from unknown numbers and a text that said bang 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 and uh you know i don't know if he was in on it and he knew jennifer was sending these things or what because it just it all just seems so crazy but i personally think that he doesn't know that jennifer was the one who was sending him all these things from these unknown numbers and whatnot um but yeah like this girl she truly was nuts like it sounded like more than her being infatuated with her like ex-boyfriend it sounded like she was chemically imbalanced you know what i mean like wow so as he's describing her obsession with him it starts to sound like she thought that he would get back together with her if her parents were out of the way and you guys know what that means but the problem is that her ex-boyfriend started seeing a new girl named Christine and that Jennifer just couldn't accept that. And so the cops start finding it strange that there was no forced entry in the home for the break-in um, robbery attempt that uh, offed her parents. So actually, let me be clear here. Both of her parents did not croak, okay? They did not die. Um, the mom did, right? But the father, he his bullet landed somewhere around here. 
um, like it was, I think he lost an eye over this or something like that, or, or lost vision or something like that. But like the bullet landed somewhere here. And of course that goes through your head and everything like that. So he was placed into a coma. And at this point, I don't know if Jennifer is aware that he's still alive, but in a coma, but, um, her whole entire getting away with this hinges on him passing away. But even still the cops are like, why wasn't there any forced entry? So first of all, the watches, the expensive watches, the expensive cameras, money, money was lying around in this home untouched. And now we're finding out that there was no forced entry. This is looking really suspicious. Like somebody may have or orchestrated this, but we don't know who. And at this point, like they start suspecting Jennifer, but she's such an unsuspecting, like, you know, young girl and stuff like that. So it's kind of hard to like accept that this like little, like, you know, what is she like? 19 20 year old would do this to her own parents you know what i mean at this point when they bring jennifer in for another day of questioning she starts to kind of paint her ex-boyfriend's new girlfriend as a potential aggressor which is like jennifer jennifer you are so obsessed with this man that you want to frame his girl so that you would off your parents and then try to frame his girlfriend for the for the slaying of your parents so you can get with him like you are you're really not thinking this through because it's not making any kind of sense you know um like why would that girl off your parents and not you if she had a problem with you and if you're saying she's jealous of you like again jennifer i see why you had issues in school you're not that smart then we start getting into the issues that jennifer had with her parents so it turned out that her parents were kind of considered like tiger parents very very overbearing they really wanted her to push her to have the best career make as money much money as possible to have a very prestigious hobby which is playing piano apparently jennifer was some sort of a piano prodigy and her piano teacher um confides in the fact that there was this one time where jennifer was doing a piano lesson and she just breaks down in the middle of this lesson sobbing over the fact that she feels as though her parents were being way too controlling. She said that they follow her everywhere. They refuse to let her, let her date like a Boston pizza cook, um, you know, because of what they saw for her. Remember, they wanted her to be a pharmacist. She was a piano prodigy, all sorts of things. And it's like, it's one thing if the boyfriend is like working in Boston pizza to like make money, to go to university, study X, Y, Z, and like, you know, advance his life. But it felt as though to her parents that he just wanted to stay in that position. And again, at the time, they didn't know that he was dealing rugs. But, and you know what rugs means, right, you guys? Um, they didn't know that that's what he, he was doing, right? But they they felt like that's the station in life that he was going to stay at. And it wasn't going to be um, healthy for their daughter, which, listen, I completely agree with that. I don't agree with following your child around, this, that, and the other. So anyway, Jennifer wanted to be a kinesiologist, but her dad forced her to be a pharmacist instead. He said, okay, listen, this is still going to be in the realm of science, but it's like a job where you're going to make more money and it's more socially prestigious to be a pharmacist than a kinesiologist. So this is what I've decided for you. And I do find that to be very, very sad because kinesiology is a very important and respectable profession as well. Um, and it's not an easy degree to get. Don't those people have to name every muscle, every bone in the body? Like, what? That, that's hard. So I, I'm really sad that her dad wouldn't allow her to pursue that very like noble career path nonetheless. So we later find out that Jennifer didn't even get into the university program that she wanted to. She didn't get into university. Like she was lying to her parents that she had gotten in. Like they were under the impression that she was legitimately studying at uni. She was forging um, the acceptance letter, the student loans, everything was forged to make these people believe that she was a student at I think it was Ryerson University. And that is so crazy to me, you guys. Um, I'm shook. I really, really am. The level of manipulation, connivory, lying that you have to be capable of to pull this off is insane. So at this point, it's the end of the road for Jennifer. Like she maybe is thinking that she's getting away with everything, but her dad wakes up from his coma and he is able to tell the police exactly what went down. During one of her police interviews, Jennifer claimed that the um, burglars had tied her hands behind her back, tied her arm to the post on the railing of the stairs, and she had her phone in her pocket. And so she was able to maneuver behind her back to get her phone, put it on speaker. And she actually was able to show this to a cop. So maybe she could have been able to get away with this um, and then like yell to 911 about what happened. But 
um, the cops were not understanding at all. They're like, it just doesn't make any sense that they would leave a surviving witness. Why would they leave you, you know, and then off your parents? Like the whole thing is just so weird. But she was able to show that with her hands behind her back and whatnot, she was able to get the phone that the cops had her demonstrate on. Um, but at this point, it all falls apart because her dad wakes up from his coma. And what he testifies as going down is completely different from what Jennifer claimed went down. So the dad said that he had fallen asleep. The wife was downstairs soaking her feet after her line dancing class. And then these men come in the home, wake him up, drag him downstairs to where his wife is already screaming, crying, begging for her life, begging them not to kill her. And, um, and he's getting pistol whipped and everything like that. And then Jennifer comes down the stairs, not bound or anything. And she's having a conversation with one of the three people who entered into the home. Like how shocking must that have been for her parents and especially her dad who survived. And now, you know, maybe at the time it didn't register as weird to him. Maybe he just was like, oh, they're having mercy on her because she's a young girl. You know what I mean? Like she doesn't have any money they can rob. But now realizing that, oh my God, my daughter did this to us. Like that must have been so, 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 so shocking to him. I can't imagine. I'm so sad even just imagining it. She truly, guys, she's an ice cold demon. She really is. At first I was like, oh, she's just obsessed with her boyfriend, this, that, and the other. But like with everything, like accumulating together. I'm like, oh God, no, I think she's just actually just like psychopathic or something like that. So she really did think that she was going to get away with it. She did not count on her dad surviving. And at this point it is over. Um, and by the way, like when the cops asked her in the first interview, what color the hitmen were and everything like that, she said it was like black guys. Right. And one of them had dreads, but then they, when they start interrogating her harsher, they're saying that she lied about it and that, that the guys were not even black and stuff like that. Um, so I was like, oh, okay, like that's weird that she would lie about their race. Like you hear about this type of thing happening sometimes, but I was like, oh my God, like she did that too, like Jesus, right? And we're gonna get to that a little bit later because something um, is at play with that. For her third and final interview, they hire like the expert guy who is able to like tell if you're lying, pull your lies out of you and everything like that. And he really goes hardcore, like, interrogation on her and he gets like everything like she admits to some things but she, I, we're still not sure if she's telling the exact truth because she said that she was supposed to be the one she hired them to off her but i don't understand it like why would you hire people to off you you can do that yourself very no you know this is gonna sound flippant and it's not meant to be but you can do that by yourself very efficiently very easily if that's something that you choose to do so i don't get why you would hire not one but three people to take you out I don't think she's telling the truth at all about that. She said that she wanted to leave this world because her parents put too much pressure on her. She felt like she was a disgrace and a failure and everything like that. I do believe that she feels that way about herself, but again, I don't believe that she put the hit out on herself. That's just not something people do. And mind you, you know how much she paid for this? Only $2,000. I'm sorry, but Hitman, like, are you guys okay? You are so stupid. To do this stuff and put yourself in jail for the rest of your life over $2,000, you can get a credit card for $2,000 if you need that money that bad and then pay it off slowly. Why would you do this for $2,000? Get a credit card, get a payday loan, get a second job. Like, this is so crazy to me that you would do this over that little amount. And it was three people. You're dividing 2 k between... Let me get my calculator because that is just ridiculous to me. Hang on. $2,000 divided by three people is what? $666 each. Imagine doing that for $666. What? You know what I mean? Like that is just so nuts to me. You can go rob someone for that. You know, I'm not saying to do it, but go rob someone for $666. Go rob a store, you know what I mean? And sell the merchandise. You don't need to do this, you know? And if you get caught doing the other stuff, you'll go to jail maybe, you know? But not for life, the way you're going to life for this. Like people are so weird to me that you would do this. You would attempt to end two people's lives for $666. Oh, the I'm going to say the ghetto. I'm sorry, but the ghetto, like the freaking ghetto. How, how foolish, you know what I mean? So anyway, um, you know, here's something. We get a plot twist at this point. It turns out that her ex-boyfriend helped her connect with these hitmen to take out her parents. Yeah. So at this point, I'm like, oh my God, like, this is so crazy to me. Like she did this 
thinking that if her parents were out of the way, she could be with this man. But this man already moved on to that new girl, Christine, right? And then in the text messages between him and Jennifer, he says, Jennifer, I don't love you. The way you feel about me is the way I feel about Christine. But anyway, go take out your parents. Why? The whole reason she wanted to do this was to be with you. You don't want to be with her. So what is your reason for wanting to take out her parents? Is it payback for ruining your relationship? Or as the cops suggest, it's maybe because he knew about the parents' financial situation. The parents had paid off their home. Jennifer would have been an heiress to, you know, a portion of that. She has a brother, so she would have had half of that. Life insurance, different things like that. So maybe he was going to try to manipulate her and use her for that, which is just, oh, disgusting. You know what I mean? You know, oh, honestly, both all of these people involved are psychotic. Like, you know, I kind of stopped watching these true crime documentaries for a bit because I, Netflix does a really good job with them. They really do. And then after there's one that I watched back in 2017, I want to say. It was called Evil Genius. And when I tell you guys, I have not been the same since I watched that documentary. Just the level of depravity and psychopathy and just like the darkness of your soul that you have to be to do the things that these people did in Evil Genius. It makes me sad. Honestly, I could cry even talking about it. It makes me really sad. Um, so that was one that really just shook me to my core. It's been how many years? It's been eight years and I'm still shaken up by that documentary. You know, it was a really well done documentary, but be careful, like only watch it if you're able to like handle it. You know, I thought I was, but I'm just so shook that people like that exist. You know what I mean? And so after that, um, I took a break and then I started watching more, I think in 2019, 2020, and I would watch them all the time because, you know, the Netflix algorithm, they see you like something. So they're always going to suggest and you're always going to click. And I was like, oh, these stories are just too heavy. And the fact that it's all real life is just, it's scaring me. It's making me really paranoid about people and whatnot. Like I can't, you know, so now this is me taking a step back into the true crime world for, for the first time in a really long time, you know, um, and again, I'm just so shaken up by the fact that people like this exist. Imagine hoping and praying for a child and you give birth to this child and it turns out to be Jennifer ready to off you, you know, like it's just, it makes me so sad for her parents. You know, they were just doing their best. They were pushing her to get an education, find someone who also valued your education and like, you know, like building a life and everything like that, you know, and was ambitious and stuff like that. Like, were they putting too much pressure on her? Maybe, you know, were like, did they go too far in that? Yeah, maybe, but did they deserve to be offed for that? No, you know, all Jennifer had to do was make it to adulthood and then maybe take a step back, move out of the house. They could, you know, maybe go no contact for a little bit and like really place your boundaries in place. But she didn't need to do all of this, you know? It's really, really um, just shocking and jarring. So anyway, her ex-boyfriend, the one who connected her to these hitmen and everything like that. So she said, when she finds out that this man doesn't even love her and doesn't even want to get back to her, she wants to call the thing off, right? And they were exchanging a text message. But he said, no, you're going to do this. Like, blah, blah. So she ultimately went through with the plan because he ultimately, like, pushed her to do it anyway, even though he didn't even want to be with her at the end of the day. Like, these people are sick. So remember earlier when I said that Jennifer claimed that the three men were black and then the cop interrogating her said she lied about that? Well, plot twist, no, she didn't lie about that. It was true. They were black and there was a dreadhead there too. So um, yeah, I found that really interesting that the cop lied about that. And I know this because the cops started talking about the names of all of these people. So I went and Googled their names. I was like, well, here they are. They look black to me. Like, I, I don't know, like, Okay, but I guess that was just some kind of technique to get some sort of a confession out of her or something like that. So the fact that she really went through all of this for a man who had like no ambition in life other than selling rugs um, is just crazy to me. And then we get a plot twist. And I gotta say like this plot twist, I don't love the way it was just dropped there without like really being explored or anything like that. But the plot twist was that it turns out that this is not the first time that Jennifer tried to off her parents. In fact, according to the police, Jennifer tried to off her dad specifically by going to a friend and asking this friend to do it 10 months earlier before this one was actually carried out. Um, and she paid this friend and everything. So this girl, like it, she's not so naive, like, oh, it was a spur of the moment. Oh, she was pressured this, that, or the other. Like, this is who she is. She is a stone cold killer, pathological liar, like a psycho, you know, she's ice cold. Um, and it's just really, really sad. And you know, the dad, I don't know what kind of guardian angel he has, but to survive two assassination attempts from his own daughter, 
is insane you know like god bless him because yeah like he really has a guardian angel now when we get into what her mother's last words were before she passed away in this hit organized or orchestrated by her daughter she she was when she was crying begging for her life and everything like that she said okay like you know if you're gonna kill me just don't hurt my daughter don't hurt my daughter meanwhile your dad daughter is casually walking around the house like you know yeah off her isn't that scary you guys like honestly when i heard that my heart dropped and i just wanted to cry i was so sad like i can't i can't you know anyway on the bright side everybody involved got life in prison without the possibility of parole for 25 years and her father was also granted a permanent lifetime no contact order against jennifer as well you know i gotta ask though was it worth it for any of these people jennifer you didn't even get the man the man didn't want to be with you right and then the ex-boyfriend what did you get out of this you got nothing now you lost your ex-girlfriend you lost the girl who was obsessed with you and you lost your life too and then the three hitmen for 666 dollars no 660 600 dollars and 67 cents you lost your entire life for two people you don't even care about like that are you guys like okay like you're all so stupid unfortunately though canadian laws are rather lax so when we say life in prison it doesn't necessarily mean spending the rest of your life in prison so there's the technically for life side which the life sentence itself lasts your entire lifetime even if paroled you'd be under supervision by corrections canada so like you can get out but be supervised so it would be parole basically for the rest of your time and then um in this case we learned that they weren't going to be uh eligible for parole for at least 25 years which means that they got a first degree murder charge um so after that again you can get that parole and everything like that and then like have be free but supervised you know what i mean which I, I don't think is fair i think it should mean your life 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 for sure anyway this is a very well done documentary about a very sad and tragic case i am so sad that her mom ultimately wound up passing away i'm i'm sad that her dad was traumatized by this entire event and lost his wife and lost his daughter and just you know his whole entire life was flipped upside down she has a brother as well who i'm sure was shaken up by this he lost his mom his dad was in a coma and is probably suffering lifelong damage he lost his sister like it is a lot to process for the rest of their lives and so i'm really really sorry for all of them and i'm just disgusted by jennifer her boyfriend and like these loser hitmen as well everybody involved in this was just such a loser like that's all i can say you know they're just such pathetic losers to do this for literally no reason anyway guys let me know what you thought about the documentary in the comment section down below and as usual we'll chat that's all for now thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time